Não dá que dá que não mais. Do Bula Bula America, do Bula Australia. Isso, do bula, bula mais suba, o barão da minha vida nem bula de naca. Vinaka, vinaka vakalevu, nimbula, nimbula vinaka, na vio kanyo ni barro mtikuma naka vinaka nikuwa, vikimu ni kevisara na sema tikuma iviti, nitakino ni mbulu mbulu vinaka tiko na tiki ni ngonongo, okla nyo ni satava tiko na ngonandrendre, ena ngonongo, ena buku ni mate to vikenda tiko ngo na COVID-19 kadiwa, Yo ni taka ni rongo vinaka tiko ya ni nambia ulivu liva ni tala na we Dr. T. Na ya kai vinaka ni singa ni kuwa. Singa lotu lewu tiko meviti ni katini katolu ni me. Ia singa buke lulu chungo ya Hawaii. Ngoa singa ya katini karoo tiko ni singa. Ni singa buke lulu. Ia nda maru taka chiko ni kuwa na nonra singa ni oira na wakanda na rotuma. Nda pami ni vinaka taka tala chunga ni ndo na madha vinaka. Ni nafaka na numi ni Rotuma Language Week. Dapat video bina kita kena bawa lembu nawai ya Maori. Bikin ni kita sara na wakan dalam Rotuma. Oni saya mati kumai. Ena ya kabina kita kuat. Bina kabina bawa lembu nabi toko ni kumai. Ena nanda dobi talo nanti kena bayi sing bayi magawa. Ia nabi sing lutu lembu. Esa biuta ni tiku me non rangau nana tambangon. Sena dana bawa bawa pertanian na talo no youth. Program, ya ni kuat kerusan na youth mana tak kena dorong bongo, tu meli tu ngota, nangon kerobitan lo kini kita tu meli, tu kono view tu meli, isa doktor T, ayo sah siang cukup banyak ni youth, sama ni tu kono view Vitalia, dorusan na youth roro ni sih ni kuat. Wabi ni nak sarwa lewu, warna turang go tu meli nanona, sulem nanona ngau na memeh nanda bulangi, ena kau nak ni kua. Tiko esok nanona italan noa, mena me italan nota kau bikin dan nak kau ni kua. Binak kau lewu malo lele tu meli, binak kau lewu na nomu ngolemai mendoro me italan noa nak kau nak ni kua. Oklah mite kau tak ngan mendoro italan noa tu meli. Uh, yeah, if you yeah. can uh, eh, introduce yourself uh, to the audience, na puna ng na puto mekina, na nomo kor ni vasu kaya na puno siya matiko mekina ni ko to mail binak. Um, bul binak ka, well, bul siya. Um, yung ko to mail itong gata. Um, nago oroy ngasova undu unrove. Um, awas si hapay tonga. 
Isa, oh, vinaka, vinaka. Na kubali msaro. Uh, malo, uh, au pito, uh, <laughs> tumeli. Iya, yeah, nasi yeah. amu tiku menikua. Uh, vinaka. Thank you so much for taking the time out from your busy schedule to uh, be our guest uh, today. Yeah? Um, so as you have uh, mentioned your connection to Tom uh, and your connection to um, Vonolevu, uh, so all this time, Tumeli, have you uh, been living in Fiji? Uh, where were you raised and which schools did you go to? Oh, I'm a born and bred uh, Suva boy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've spent all my life in Suva, though, but I have uh, gone to my village, um, another Kaumatingone. Oh. And uh, I've done that, uh, but uh, most of my time I've been uh, here in Suva. And uh, I went to school in um, Vyuto, Vyuto Primary, and then in uh, Suva Grammar, you know, go Lions. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, that's, um, that's basically what I've been up, uh, where I've been most of this time. Yeah, I, 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 when I was, I think when I was born and then one, or, one year, I think I, my parents, we went to Australia and I, oh. I stayed there for, I think, four years when my parents did their degrees and then mm -hmm. we came back but uh i think that's the longest i've been overseas <laughs> and do you have any siblings at all to me uh, i have one sibling uh one older brother and oh. uh yeah so just a small family just uh, my parents and uh, my brother and i oh and uh yeah one thing i was really um you know one thing that um, made me you know, sent the invitation to you, as I was saying to you before we went live, I was really, I was following your, um, your, was it like a documentary or this um, uh, online digital platform that you created and you had Naita Simeon Sebun Renre, you know, uh, you were talking with him and talking about uh, Fiji's prehistory. What actually motivated you? Um, to do that program because it was very, very informative and you're so blessed to um, be in the same space as Simi. Yeah, it is. It was great. It was really great to to meet up with him. Well, so originally for me, yeah, you know, Suva boy, yeah, just staying Suva and I never really got to learn uh, much about my culture. Yeah? Like, you know, it's not like in school they have a... Uh, they have a traditional Fijian, like, you know, you get to learn about the history of Fiji or anything. Mm. So growing up, uh, I just have a, a barely, just barely comprehensible uh, understanding of uh, what Fiji was like uh, pre-contact. I was more interested in what Fiji was like uh, pre-contact because from contact till now, that's yeah. history that's recorded. Eh? Right. Uh, even though the olden days, the, the history the was lands of uh, mm. more interested in uh, Fiji, how us Fijians live uh, mm. and so during my things so in my really basic research I came across uh, I was appointed to Mr. Seven Renre at the Ministry of Itoki Affairs mm. and so when I went to visit him yeah of course after finding out that he was uh, a teacher as well in grammar I was like hey sir <laughs> And uh, we got to talking um, and then he told me a lot of fascinating stories mm. and then I learned a lot. And uh, as he was telling me these stories, I was thinking to myself, you know, uh, I'm sure there's other people out there who could benefit from this, not just me. And I felt like I thought it would be a good opportunity to share what I've learned straight from the horse's mouth, so to speak. Mm. Uh, share it direct uh, online eh? and because you know me as a generation that we're comfortable with the internet and technology I endeavored to put my skills to use and uh, got a camera and asked for some um, support from uh, friends and uh, who, who kindly uh, who's this, uh, Mana Coffee they they sponsored the show they gave us a place mm. to shoot and uh, my friend Dave Lavaki of First Fighter he gave the video equipment and so with the help of my friends we all uh, put together this very small production Yes. only four episodes because for me i'm new to this eh? i'm new to video production but uh, mm -hmm. i said oh you know we'll just we'll just give it a shot we'll just see how it goes um you know can't be any worse than going live like i'm going on now boy big steps yeah? <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah so we shot those four episodes and i'm really glad that um uh, i had mr Sanjoji because he really carried the show 
Um, me, I was just asking the really basic questions. I just let him talk. He he knows his stuff. Yeah. He can go on and on. He actually told me before we did the shoot, he said, okay, Melly, you got to remind me, yeah? That time, yeah, that time. You know, you said the, each episode would be maybe like 40, 30 to 40 minutes. I said, okay, yeah. don't worry. But when we were shooting the episodes, boy, it was yeah. giving so many interesting stories that I was really tempted to just keep going. But uh, yeah, I was really oh. lucky to have him uh, on the show and mm. I've learned a lot and I'm really glad that I got to share it with uh, with both local gang as well as uh, Fijians overseas and and anyone else who's interested in the uh, pre-contact uh, Fiji, what Fiji was like. And um, I was really happy for that. Even though I've only done four episodes and I mm. specifically stated four episode podcast and mm. I stated at the end that this is the end. I've been getting uh, quite a few messages about uh, with episodes five to 50. <laughs> so I said, oh, hey, well, Amanda, you know, I, I'm sort of new at this. Let's just, uh, you know, one step at a time. First, so we got that out and um, hopefully, you know, I'd like to revisit it uh, at another stage later in the future. Hopefully if we get sponsors or you know, if we get a, a lot more interest, um, I definitely be very interested to come back to because there's so mm. much of Fiji history that we, well, I, I'm saying we, I'm speaking for myself as a uh, uh, urban uh, susumandrai kind of fella, eh? yes, uh, yeah. born and bred in the city, don't really get to learn this kind of uh, uh, in-depth knowledge about Fijian uh, history. Mm. And so uh, there's, a, there's a lot more topics that I'd love to cover, um, mm. but I just didn't have time. But if given the chance, definitely like to revisit it. Yeah, oh, that's really good. And I'm sure, you know, many of our listeners, uh, they were listening, they were watching as well. And uh, I definitely agree that there will be episode five to 50. Um, and if anyone, you know, out there who's listening into this Talamna session, and if you know of anyone who can sponsor, you know, these uh, types of programs, uh, please let me know or let Tumeli know, because uh, um, as you said, uh, Tumeli, the you know, younger generation, eh? but there's a lot of young ones, particularly, as you said, those of you who are born and raised in the urban areas, there's a kind of like a, a disconnect. Yeah. Yeah, between your vanua and where you were raised. So this kind of programs, to me, I look at it as a, a bridge. Yeah, so it's a bridge that kind of connects uh, this knowledge gap. Um, so I really congratulate you um, to Meli for, for being brave. You know? Yeah, mm. and um, one like that's one of the many reasons why I wanted to make the show was because I specifically made the show in English um, mm. because for people like me who uh, wanted to learn about their Fijian culture but uh, sort of like um, not quite as good uh, to ask questions in Fijian, so I thought <laughs> this would serve as a sort of a great uh, jumping off point there. Eh? to get them really interested, just like it got me interested. And um, I'm hoping that, um, it, it's su surprising. Uh, I get a few comments uh, asking in Fijian, like, hey, you know, can you do the show in Fijian? I, I had to politely reply, uh, man, you know, like uh, in, in general, the, the, the gang who can speak Fijian, they uh, they advantage uh, over me because they can just go directly to, you know, their, their, their parents, their uncles and aunties and their grandpas, just ask straight in Fijian. What they want, what they want to learn. But for me, I'm sort of at a disadvantage. My Fijian's kind of, uh, it's it's good enough to get me uh, into trouble. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, it's it's not quite good to carry out a really good solid conversation. Eh? So which is why yes, uh, another uh, reason why I made this show so that uh, can help uh, other people, other Fijians like me, um, you know, get a leg up into being interested into learning more about uh, our shared culture and history. Yes, uh, no, that is so true. You know, what you've done, as I was saying, you know, I use the word brave because there would be a lot of uh, young people just like you who may be thinking of doing it, um, but they don't know how. But what you did was you did not not do it by yourself. You had, you know, other people who, who offered you the technical support, the venue for the shoot, and of course, the cultural knowledge holder. Um, Simeon and Sebundrende to come together with you and you just facilitate. You were very natural on camera. So I have to say... Uh, one that... level big mouth, yeah? <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> and I know there's lots of Bono Levu gang uh, also watching as well. So Vitako Valley for rapping uh, Bono Levu to me. Uh, well done, well done for that. Yeah, no, definitely. You know what you've done as well. What I, when I was watching uh, your episodes, I could uh, reflect on what used to happen before uh, pre, um, pre, you know, pre-colonial days was the Tukuni. You know, so back yeah. in the day, they used to do the Tukuni and the and the Talanoa. Uh, with our elders, yeah. Any comment on the tukuni? Because that's what I, I, I thought when I saw you and see me talking. It's funny. I actually learned about the art of uh, tukuni from my workmate, um, Alumeli. Mm. She's from um, um, Natewa, and um, she's pretty. She's like she's like old school. She she grew up in the village. You know, her dad had a shop and take her on the boat. You know, real like grew up in the village kind of lifestyle. And she told me that when she was young, which is a while back, she said that they would have that uh, tradition of the Tukuni where the, the kids her age, really young, they'd gather like, uh, you know, uh, little gifts of like food or like um, yeah, little gifts. And then they take them to the eldest in the village. And um, that would be the time when they um, get to learn about, uh, you know, the, the really fun stories and the missing legend. That's how, the uh, culture, our culture is already passed down through the generations um, through that uh, particular, very particular tradition. And I really liked that tradition because it meant that the uh, old, uh, older generation had something to do. You know, they didn't just, um, you know, how these days we just put the old people in the old people's home or we just, you know, keep them at home. Um, in that sort of setting, they actually still contributed uh, to, to the, to the well being of the uh, community. Uh, at their old age by continuing the, to ensure that the next generation, um, you know, learned and they passed down um, the important bits about the uh, cultures and traditions. So I, the, for me, that was one, one aspect that I learned about that I found really fascinating. Um, times change. So I'm, part of me is wondering like, you know, how can we harness the use of technology to, to ensure that this particular aspect of our culture uh, mm -hmm. carries forward and I mean, we're kind of doing it now with, uh, with uh, you know, us two talking verbally and just um, talking about our, our cultures and traditions. So I'm hoping that we don't, uh, we, I'm hoping that with the use of technology, we can definitely make it um, work for us. And um, uh, we can definitely um, take steps to ensure that um, aspects of our culture stay remembered and stay fresh in the memories of our next generations uh, to come. That's a, a very good point eh? you raised there uh, in terms of the younger generation. Sometimes I think the older generation may look at technology in a negative way, um, but I think now you, we are harnessing yeah, technology to bring all these rich stories and history and uh, you know, be shared openly like this um, with our audience. So well done uh, to Meli for you know, championing that. Um, and now speaking of technology, I understand that you started your own creative arts uh, business. Would you like to share a little bit about that? Oh, well, um, tactic, well, it's not quite, um, it's not quite a, an actual business, um, okay. but more uh, recently I've started to try and become a lot more creative uh, for myself um, because it's funny over the years, um, I, I yeah I'm 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 I like to think of myself as a creative person and I can kind of draw I can kind of um, do creative stuff but I never really I never really did all of creative stuff for myself um, I actually helped I like helping other people with their film projects with their art or with their music you know, um, but I never did I never consciously did stuff for myself um, until recently until 2019 when mm -hmm. I. I, I have a background, I have some uh, skills in uh, animation. So with my animation skills, I made an animated short film in 2019. And so it was from there, then I realized, A, this is very fun. I should keep doing this. And B, there's not a lot of this kind of content from the from Fiji or from the Pacific. And so with that, those two really important um, realizations, I. I took the next step to try and do more of this. And so this, these are all like the Fiji BC show and um, what I'm currently working on now. These are all just extensions of me trying to do more, um, more creative stuff. And in the process of doing all these uh, creative endeavors, mm -hmm. I also want to, um, you know, I also want to showcase um, Fiji to the world, which is why <sighs> I, I did the Fiji BC um, project because 
for one thing, it was for me to learn video production, but also because I wanted to get Fiji out there. And um, that's what I'd like to continue to uh, champion Fiji and put it on the, um, the big screen. Oh, well done. Wow, look at that. And, uh, and did you have any award on any of your uh, videos that you created? Well, um, the, 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 first, the first short film that I made, the animated mm -hmm. short film, is called You, the Choice of My Parents. Mm -hmm. And um, if uh, for those of uh, you kids who are paying attention in uh, English class in school, that's the uh, poem by uh, Konai Helu Thayman, Professor Konai Helu Thayman. And so that poem for me really stuck in my head um, the few times that I was paying attention in class. Um, <laughs> and so that point really stuck in my head. And so I turned it, I wanted to turn it into uh, an animated short film. Uh, and because Konai Helu is from Tonga and mm. my mom is from Tonga, I used it as an opportunity to get to know my Tongan side a bit more. Mm. And so that project was uh, a, a sort of a study in the, uh, you know, the Tongan Tapai, it's called the uh, Ngatu. Yeah. There's a, uh, the, the very brown there's a lot of brown there's a lot of uh, it's funny the um the tongans they they tend to draw more um straightforward symbols of like birds and and stuff on their on their tapa whereas fijians use tend to use more like these kind of um patterns there eh? uh, but yes. uh, just from that project of working on that short film i got to learn a lot about my tongan side and i oh. i got the, the the poem translated into tongan my mom mm worked on the translation. Mm. Um, uh, it's okay, my, my mom and uh, Konai are kind of related, so uh, I guess she gets the the pass to uh, translate the thing into Tongan. <laughs> of course, I did uh, show it to um, uh, uh, Professor Konai Heluthiam and afterwards, she was very happy. She she said that uh, she was very glad. She's uh, she's very appreciative that her work gets gets to be turned into, you know, a new form of uh, a new medium, right? Uh, instead of just writing now, it's on the screen, and and she's really happy that it still has life and still gets to um, be broadcasted to people, you know, in Fiji and around the world. And so I was really thankful both for the opportunity to work in the medium to learn more about the my Tongan side, as well as to um, to work on a very you know big po uh, important uh, piece of uh, poetic uh, work from Professor Konaya Luthemen. So that was. From that project, um, I sent it to a few film festivals around the world, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I was, you know, it 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 did well. Uh, like it got accepted into a lot of them. Uh, in one film festival, in um, it's an online film festival. It, it's called the um, Micromania Film Festival. It won the award for best uh, short animation. So that's uh, that's that's one award I got. That is amazing. And uh, look at that, you know, uh, was that the first uh, submission you made and you won an award? Um, it was, it was during the process, I think of uh, yeah. submitted to a few. It won last year during the pandemic. Eh? So a lot of film festivals, ah, they went online. Yes. So I was really happy to, um, mm. they, they did the streaming of the awards and they invited me on a Zoom chat like this, where wow. they said that you won. So I was, I was really happy to, to be present for that. Yeah, that's wonderful. And uh, receiving that award or um, getting that award, what is something that you can um, learn from from it? Like, how can you project that for, uh, for for the future in terms of you producing more? One interesting thing that I've come to realize in terms mm -hmm. of film production in general, mm -hmm. uh, I will say that the barrier of entry has lowered significantly because the access to technology in terms of filmmaking is gotten cheaper and easier. For example, before you could, you know, the, those big bulky cameras, those are really expensive. But now our cell phones have really good cam uh, cameras built in on them. So for any enterprising young soul out there in Fiji, if you wanna make a film, the only thing you need is someone's phone and uh, a good story <laughs> a good story that's the um, two most important things well there's a lot of things a lot of other things about but yeah the in terms of what i've learned recently is that mm -hmm. it's very it's easier now to get into this and it's also easier to get your work out on the internet the especially with the youtube you've got youtube you've got um um uh, vimeo you've got and film festivals you can now submit your work online so there's it's I don't want to say when I say it's it's easy. I don't want to say like you know you're guaranteed to become a 
superstar mm-hmm. straight away. There's a lot of work mm-hmm. involved, but I'm saying that it's not as difficult as it was 10, 15 years ago. So I definitely encourage any anyone who who's, has mm-hmm. a sort of interest in filmmaking to give it a shot because, uh, you know, I, I'm just starting. And um, wow. yeah. It's, That's it's, very encouraging. Yeah. And I know, like as you mentioned, everyone has a phone and most of our young ones do have smartphones. And as you said, the quality of many of these cameras are just as good as those large bulky ones. And I think one thing I like of what you said is they have the, if they have the passion and I'm sure everyone, you know, has a story to, to, to share. Oh yeah, especially yes. with um, we've talked about how how uh, the Fijian culture or and you know to include the rest of the Pacific cultures in the South Pacific we're very uh, oral based so like I mean you know who better to tell the good stories than our traditions that been doing it uh, all our all our existence yeah. yes, and that's a very empowering way you know to let us or maybe just remind us on how we need to value our own voices. You know, because oh. I've seen I've seen a lot of times where even within our work in the field of archaeology, yeah, uh, most of the time we uh, often have our friends from outside the region, you know, who who come in and they 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 see uh, the richness of our culture and they value it. Sometimes I notice, uh, uh, Tumeli, um, sometimes they value it more than how we value it ourselves. What what is your uh, perspective on that? Well, I think for me personally, it's sort of like, you know, how you, if you see something every day, after a while, it uh, becomes uh, common. Eh? Yes. Uh, a lot of uh, when tourists come in and, or well, maybe not the tourists, but the people who, uh, from overseas who come in, they, they live with us for a few weeks. And, you know, yeah. they notice the difference in uh, the way we, the way we live and the way our culture is different from theirs. And they yes. point these things out to us uh, that are surprised. But then after a while, we're like, oh, yeah, of course we do that. But it has it takes uh, the perspective and uh, often outside it to point it out to make it fresh again to us. Um, re- a lot of uh, things that we do uh, culturally, or even like uh, our slangs, um, like I would say, set for everything. <laughs> set this here, set that, set no, set yes. Uh, my favorite one is the eyebrows. You know, I was going. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, that's uh, the the people overseas find that hilarious. Yeah. But for yeah. us, like, again, it's something that we do, but we don't uh, realize it uh, consciously until someone else points it out. Yeah, no, absolutely. You're so true. Because uh, I teach a group of uh, students in Australia, and that's what uh, one of the students was saying. They were like, I think for us uh, non fijians we actually don't do the eyebrow language. Uh, that's when I start, you know, it clicked to me that this is kind of <laughs> another form of language. Yeah, the non I just nearly did it. <laughs> Yes, uh, no, that is very so true. And I think uh, uh, to me, it also takes uh, many of us, uh, you know, like you were, went to Australia with mom and dad. Uh, there's a lady who's saying hello to you, uh, Chima Ketera. Uh, Chima yeah, Ketera right. remembered you when you were a little boy in Sydney. Uh, oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> I, I hope I'm less cheeky uh, I am now than I was then. <laughs> So uh, she was saying, and she remembered you and remembered your mom and dad. So oh, uh, for remembering uh, Tumeli. And so you've got share a number any of embarrassing baby photos. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a number of your fans uh, all saying hello and uh, saying Bula. Uh, Matilita Rangongo, Ariella, uh, Zibia, thank you, Tau. Uh, for logging in and for listening to our Talano today. Um, I think one of the points you mentioned eh, um, in terms of uh, us being reminded to value our own stories, our own voices, because even for those of us who have left Fiji and uh, even those of us left the region and go out into the larger nations and living there, we tend to miss uh, our homes. You know, we miss Tonga, we miss Fiji. And then we started um, exploring our own um, our own history, you know, and uh, that's that's something I, even for me now living in Hawaii uh, or living outside of, of Fiji, living in New Zealand too, um, as soon as I left Fiji, I got to appreciate Fiji more. See, so I had to live in order to, you know, appreciate. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's something I, I always carry with me to me. 
Yeah, you're in, you're an archae, archae, you were an archaeologist, or are you, are you still sort of like a, a archaeologist? Like a, you, you. Sorry, yeah. you, you know what? You know what? You know what? I should say. You should tell me a bit about yourself, even though this is your show. Because <laughs> I, for, for me personally, I'm interested in like you know old Fiji, and so yes. for me to find out uh, an an actual like a person who's, who who does the whole like the digging and the uh, mm. all of that stuff, it's I I find it really fascinating. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I was very blessed uh, to Meli um, in the in the early '90s um, when I was offered uh, a scholarship. Um, to, after I graduated from USP, I was offered a scholarship to go to Australia. So I studied uh, at the Australian National University um, in Canberra, uh, where I studied uh, archaeology. Um, so I studied under the guidance of uh, uh, Peter, uh, Professor Peter Bellwood, uh, Professor Matthew Spriggs, the late uh, uh, Dr. Aubrey Parks. Uh, Dr. Aubrey Parks um, just uh, passed away a few years ago. He was in Rotuma in the 1950s. He was, uh, oh, wow. part of the, he was part of the colonial administrators. And apparently to Meli, when he was in Rotuma, he got interested in anthropology and archeology. span and so even though he has to work in the office and do all the administration work, but his heart was actually in the archeology span of Rotuma. So he started doing um, um, excavations in Rotuma. He started doing um, collecting of oral history and started writing about the history of Rotuma. And then when he went back to Australia, I met up with him. So I was doing my uh, postgraduate diploma in archeology span in Canberra and I met up with him. And it was really interesting where our paths, you know, sort of uh, crossed. Yeah. And uh, it was a joy, um, you know, studying with him as well in Australia. And I did excavations around Fiji. We um, did excavation at the Singatoka Sand Dunes. My first uh, field work was in Yasawa. Yasawa, oh, that's wild, um, yeah. Yeah, we went to Yasawa and did some excavations on the island of Waia. Um, just well, behind what, ex the what excavations were they? Yeah, so this was when we were um, exploring or looking at uh, Lapita sites. So I'm sure you must have heard um, the word yeah. Lapita. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the pottery. Oh, the Lapita yes. people. Oh, that's why a lot of them, all of their stuff was found in the Singatoka sand dunes. Uh. Yes, absolutely. And so working in Asawa and working at the Singatoka sand dunes was a big eye-opening moment for me because I got to understand uh, you know, because when I was working at the Singatoka Centers, for example, to me, um, you know, when I met up with some of my uh, Tauvu from Naronga, you know, when we do the same save, when we explain to them what we were doing, um, I had, I remember one man mentioned to me and said, Tau, you know, those of us from Naronga, we're not, um, you know, uh, we, we, won't, we, we won't build our houses on sand. And, uh, and I was like, Yon, dina, saranga, tau, dina. and so when I explained to them, that actually under the sand are the actual soil. And that's when they stop on their tracks and they're like, what? And so I started to explain that that's why we're doing, we're doing the excavations. So what you see are the top of the sand dunes, but yeah. underneath yeah. the sand dunes are the actual land where there was an old village site where people actually lived. And we found, um, you know, house remains, we found graves. Uh, we found, you know, human remains, we found pottery, you know, and the list goes on. And that's when they realized that the geology of Singatoka has to come into play. It, it, it had changed, huh? Yes, absolutely. Because like sand, like from the little, that, very little that I know about um, um, deserts and sand, they, they tend to move with the wind. So actual, yes. where, where you see the sand dunes today, they actually weren't there before. Yes. They actually moved in, so to speak, and covered that. Oh, which explains Absolutely. why we ha you have to dig and to find all that stuff. Yes. It's fascinating. Yeah. And for me, my interest in uh, um, joining the field of archaeology was uh, way back when I was young, because coming back uh, to mainly to storytelling. See, when I was watching you and uh, Neta Simeon and Sebundrenda, you know, doing your Talanoa, I realized that that was exactly the same thing I was doing with my mom and my dad. Without the, without the camera. So my mom was a, such a good storyteller when I was a little girl. And uh, there's seven of us to me, yeah? I was the youngest. And I was the only one that was born in Suba, the rest were born in Kandavu. And so 
when I was young and I started talking to my mom, she was telling me, you know, this is what we used to do. So she was telling me how she used to go fishing, how they used to go and collect uh, firewood and how she used to weave and she was raised by her two grandmothers. So my imagination was, you know, started to, I think maybe I can say go wild a little bit because I was, you know, trying to picture what my mom's life was. And that's how the seed of uh, wanting to know about prehistory, just like you, started. And hey. so I started, yeah, I started learning about, um, you know, the people of Rapa Nui, you know, I wanted to know how they carved those moais. Remember those moais? Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I saw the movie. Yes. <laughs> it's not accurate, but I saw the movie. <laughs> so just like you, you know, that curiosity, and that kind of uh, took me into all these pathways uh, that took me to all these, uh, you know, universities that I wouldn't have gone to. You know, it made me, uh, you know, allowed me to travel around the world just, just by being curious and wanting to know uh, who we really are as a people to me. It's a really great journey that you've uh, been on. Uh, imagine how many doors uh, have been opened all because of your interest in uh, archaeology. Are there many yeah. people in Fiji who are sort of interested in this uh, particular field? Um, I mean, yes. I, it's not... It's not yeah. something like, you know, you meet someone at the grog session, hey, so what do you do? Oh, I do archaeology. <laughs> uh, very low chance of meeting another Fijian who starts yeah. off with that job title. Well, for me, you know, to me, the, uh, even my family took uh, nearly a whole year for them to actually know what I actually was doing. Um, you know, I remember my, uh, some relatives were asking my mother, what does Theresa do? You know, when they saw me, they, they heard that I was working at the Fiji Museum. And I think my mother just made up something like they, 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 did, they didn't understand until they started uh, reading uh, my articles on the newspaper because the Fiji Times um, and the Daily Post at that time, they were interested in what I was doing because we were traveling all over Fiji um, to mail. I was really blessed on so many levels said that I was able to go to many of these places I wouldn't have gone to. So we yeah, did in Lao, yeah, everywhere. Um, I just loved it. I loved it. And the beauty about archaeology to me is that, you know, when you're talking about prehistory, you're not just talking about maybe something that you heard from somebody or um, anything, you know, maybe through oral history, something else. You're actually talking about things that you can touch and uh, things that you actually did through excavations. And that made archaeology so much alive for me. And uh, it added so much understanding about our prehistory. Mm. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah, so next time we go to a dig, you must come. Oh, uh, yes. Post-COVID, we'll definitely... I, uh, you're actually laughing now, but I, I'm actually dead serious. It, I, I really enjoy um, uh, the study of archaeology from a, from, a, from a very basic level, from a, from a person standing outside fanning the, um, yes, the chop. Because <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I was at the Fiji Museum, I used to run a volunteer program. So I'm not sure whether Matelita Rangongo um, Ariella, she was in the media at that time. So most of the time they cover our stories. Uh, we had Vasiti Ritova, who is one of the Fiji's uh, well-known writers. She's based in the, in the States. Um, so uh, I think it was, who else? There's a lot, <coughs> Rita Narayan. So there were a few journalists. So wherever we go and dig around Fiji, to me, they join us. Mm. And uh, it was really nice. So. Um, the Fiji Museum actually at that time, um, they actually uh, invite, you know, people to, uh, to come and be part of these, ex uh, you know, excavations. So keep an eye out. Uh, you never know the Fiji Museum might be calling out for young people like you to join them. Mm. Yes, yes, young people. <clears throat> Us young people, eh? <laughs> Definitely, definitely, oh. yeah, and uh, yeah, so I think, you know, even with your background, you know, you've got the Nrua, eh? uh, mm -hmm. right behind you, and, uh, you know, the Fiji Museum, I would say, is such a wonderful um, space, you know, resource as well for, for research. Have you been there, and uh, have you uh, used their research library too, to me? Yes, so for my next project, um, I'm working on an animated short film that's uh, based in Fiji. And one of the uh, main parts of the story uh, involves the uh, launch of a giant uh, kunu, the Nrua. So as you can see in the background here, that Nrua is, um, it's modeled in 3D. It was modeled by one of my friends, his name's Michael John. So Michael and I went to the uh, museum 
uh, sometime last year. It's funny, we, we went there and it was closed because they were doing renovations, but uh, we, were, we were allowed in for a special, um, you know, for a special study because we, 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 talk, we discussed about who we were and um, is Jerry, shout out to Jerry to, who let us in. Oh. Um, and he, he took us on the tour uh, and we took a lot of photos and reference and he explained about how Ndrua's work. And so uh, as you can see this, it's not final, but I just wanted to show this off to, the, to everyone who's watching. Oh. Yeah, so this is uh, modeled in 3D. Um, and um, this is done, I think, 50 meters. You can't really tell because there's nothing to it that uh, portrays scale. But uh, it's definitely a work in progress. But, um, you know, the work is there. Eh? So we have gone to the museum and we have definitely taken a lot of reference photos, as well as um, Jerry took us to this office on the side and mm -hmm. they had the library. <laughs> and we asked him, do you have any written material about uh, the described the Ndrua? And so he said, wait here a moment. He went inside and he came out and he brought this, uh, this old paper that was put on a board and it showed the plans of uh, Ndrua, like, you know, like the plans of like how to build it kind of thing with the, the side section and the front and oh, the measurements and everything. <laughs> it was and the way he brought it on the you know the the the, the, the flat piece of wood and putting it down gently and we were like oh wow can can we breathe near it you know <laughs> we were really scared too, so we took pictures of it and all and um, so we were we were very thankful for uh, to, to the museum and uh, to Jerry for taking us around and uh, because of that we've uh, yeah begun work um, on modeling the um, 3D in Drua so wow. definitely the museum has been a big help. Wow, that is amazing. Yeah, so I think that's something I wanted to highlight to Natala not today, yeah, the importance of museums. So to me, to me, I look at uh, museums as, as extensions of schools, you know, so we go to school like you went to Super Grammar and, uh, you know, we may go to the university or any other tech, technical schools, but sometimes as Indigenous Fijians or as Indigenous Pacific Islanders, we tend to kind of look at museums as places for tourists. Yeah, so maybe that's a message I want to share with everybody uh, now using you and Michael as a good example here that you actually went to the museum and did all the research and look what you have behind you, which is the result of your research. And that's wonderful. Yeah. Mm. So that is really, really good to know um, to me yeah, that uh, going to the museum has its benefit. Yeah, so for those of you who are uh, listening in. Oh, who, it's yeah, Sorry, carry my on. internet, my internet hiccuped. Yeah, carry on. Please, go, go uh, for it. What I was going to say was, um, in terms of research, uh, we're actually still not yet done. <laughs> There's uh, still a lot more research to do because yes. the, um, the 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 stuff that we want to picture on screen, we want to try and make it as accurate, uh, not as possible, but accurate to a point where it really does feel real. Yes. Um, There's a there's a trick in filmmaking where you mm -hmm. kind of have to balance uh, fact with uh, your story and uh, which one, if you put too much importance on one, the other suffers. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So uh, over, uh, over here, we're trying to portray uh, Fijian culture on screen um, as accurate as, uh, as it benefits the story, but which in this case is as close to the real thing as possible, especially for with regards to Ndrua. Um, that was really helpful that we went to the museum because one thing that the pictures don't convey, you know, easy to look online and you see the pictures uh, on, the, on, on the internet, oh, okay, the painting of the Ndrua, okay, set. When you go and see the actual physical specimen wow. and you are dwarfed by it, and then they explain to you, this is not even the biggest one. And you're like, wow, you know, <laughs> that really, then, then, then your mind is like, <sighs> that's, so the, the museums really help in, in way of, giving a physical you know di dimension to the thing that you want to know about because it's one thing reading it on in the books and you know someone telling you yes fijians had war clubs okay cool when you actually see it and how heavy those war clubs are and solid and you know then you start your now you start your mind starts to you know um go wild you know, imagine it start going, imagine hitting someone with it, you know in war, being war being hit by it and just so all those things can never be replicated if you were to see it on the screen or if you were to read in a book you have to be there. I feel like I'm being sponsored by the museum. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know the director of the Fiji Museum, you know, <laughs> will will be listening and watching this at some point. So they'll definitely be appreciative of what you are sharing. Uh, <laughs> 
no, this show was brought to you by the Muse Fiji Museum. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you never know. That's a wonderful prophecy there to Meli. So I'm sure uh, you and Michael and your team uh, definitely, you know, you're doing um, all of us uh, Fijians a, a, a favor, you know, by using your time and, uh, you know, doing the hard yards of actually getting all this information and, and using, and using um, film as a way to, to share your story. So how far are you into this project? So this project, when I did my first film, it was just me, and I had the, I was very lucky to have the help of David, uh, Dave, sorry, uh, Lovaki, and uh, my mom and other people who just kind of pitched in. So it was very like, hey, just you know, can, can, can do this for free, uh, you know, friend style. Eh? But for this project, when I started on this and I and I put the story together, and I realized mm -hmm. how how big of a scope it was, um, I realized I couldn't do this on my own. So. Um, you know, any good uh, film director would always depend on other people who can do the work better than he can ever could. Um, so that's why I brought in uh, other people to work on this project. But at the moment, because these are all professionals, um, I want to make sure that I, I can get them paid. Because even though these gang are all my friends, I know, you know, I've done work with most of them. And they're like, hey, I could easily ask them, hey, you want to work on the short film? They'd, they'd say yes. Um, because yes. they're great friends like that. But uh, yes. for this, because it's a bigger project, I wanted to make sure that they got paid as professionals. Right. I don't have any money. So uh, I actually looked around for any potential funding avenues and wow. um, uh, didn't have much luck with that. So now we've put uh, together a Kickstarter. So this uh, short film production is now on Kickstarter to help fund for the production of the short film. Yes. Uh, uh, we're actually kind of right now, we've sort of paused on the pre-production. Pre-production is where you sort of plan, you know, you, mm. you get the, you, you get an idea of how it's going to look, how mm. you're going to do things, you plan everything. And then production, then the work actually begins. Right. So we've sort of paused on the pre-production and we're trying to do this uh, Kickstarter to ensure wow. that uh, this project has a budget that can pay for the creatives involved and all, uh, all local gang, all local gang. That's the coolest part. I'm, I'm really, for me, I'm, I'm personally surprised that um, you know, there's there's that all the talent is here in Fiji yes. that we can get together and work together to create um, uh, film content. Yes. Um, don't have to go overseas. So I was, I was really I'm really for me I'm personally very happy and proud um, of the these gang of all uh, of all mm. being brought so, onto the show. Wow, that's wonderful. And I think for our listeners who are you know listening in, um, I think for this Kickstarter, um, you will need our support. Um, and if anyone is uh, listening in and wanted to contribute in any way, how would they um, get hold of you or how, are we, how will you be running this uh, fundraising or um, you know, getting the Kickstarter work? So the, the Kickstarter is, is live now, it's, uh, it's online. Okay. So if you were to go to the website, if you just go to www.kickstarter.com okay. um, and you search up Solimbula, that's um, Solimbula two words, you'll come across uh, that short film. And if you have a credit card or a debit card, you can actually donate if you can. I can only ever stress that if you can donate because you know, in these times, they're very, very difficult times. So this is only for those people who can afford to help back this thing. Um, you can uh, pay through Kickstarter using your, your debit or credit card. Um, some people actually uh, approached me um, saying that they don't have a card. So if you don't and you actually wanna make a, a bank transfer, you can uh, email me um mm. email me at the uh, solimbula film that's all one word solimbula film mm. uh, at gmail.com and i can send you the bank uh, transfer details mm. but yeah that's i we've the timing of this is really you know like i've been actually holding this off for mm. since last year um because wow. uh towards the beginning of last year was when i started uh put the wheels into motion to try and think about working on this which is yeah. why i met up a lot with uh, mr mr seven yes. um and then over the course of last year when all the COVID started happening i said okay i'll wait this out yeah um <laughs> and then this year i was like okay i'll just you know just gotta give it a try because this COVID thing doesn't look like it's gonna finish anytime soon right. um if i don't get to do this you know might never happen again. So uh, uh, these gang all said yes. So I want to sort of capture lightning in a bottle. I want to get this production moving when they're mm. all like, 
we can do this. So I said, okay, we'll try Amanda. I will try with the Kickstarter. Mm. We'll uh, just give it all the best. Yeah. And if we can raise funds to pay for everyone, then I'll be really happy and we can move forward with the production. Wow, so well done, well done. I think uh, <clears throat> one of the very important quality that I can see with you and the way you work is collaboration, uh, you know, working together with others. And you've identified, you know, people with key um, skills and uh, it's really uh, appreciative of you to um, identify the skills, but not wanting to have them work for you for free. So for those of you who are listening in, one big care care from Tumeli and I. Please uh, go online and check out www.kickstarter. Uh, is it dot com? Yeah, dot com. Yeah, and then you can search com. for Solimbula there. Right, there's yes, Solimbula. And uh, I think this is the platform as well, Tumeli. Uh, for and those of you who are listening in, I utilize my platform to also showcase, you know, the work that uh, our you know, young Fijians or anyone who is doing something, because what you're doing is really important. Storytelling on a digital platform, and you are showcasing Fiji, as you said, you know, uh, all to other parts of the world. And so since you need our support, you know, I'll definitely try and uh, um, share the link that you have shared with those of my contacts around the world. And um, there's a few of my friends logging in here from Australia, Andy Vale, uh, Dan Ford, she's from Nanronga, she's my Taubu. Uh, she has a number of bank cards. Uh, her purse is uh, lots and lots of uh, bank cards there, Tau. <laughs> and so uh, we will definitely, you know, utilize our traditional kinship lines and um, definitely, you know, utilize and to support um, the work that you do. So maybe just out of curiosity, who are actually in your team? just so we know who they are, because there will be some of their relatives and friends who may be listening in to me. True, uh, okay, so for the production, um, for, first of all, I have Tui Lendua, he's an artist. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if you know him, yeah. He, he's the one who draws, he's actually done comics for the Itaoke Affairs um, about um, some myths and legends that he, he drew. So he's the first guy I got on board, like, straight away, I have to get him because, you know, with his art, he's the one who can do all the drawing for the film and I can take a step back from that and concentrate on the broader picture. So Tuilendo is the artist, he'll be the one who'd be heading up the art. Um, for, for music, um, Inoke uh, Colony Singer or Knox, the musician, he, we've, uh, we've brought him on board to do the music for the, uh, for the short film. Um, for this particular short film, um, there's less emphasis on dialogue and more on visuals and music. So I wanted wow. to make sure that an actual local musician um, would be in charge of handling the music to ensure that the um, the sounds were, you know, authentic Fijian mm -hmm. and like, you know, really carry the the scope mm -hmm. of the film, um, both visually and you know to your ears. So mm -hmm. that's for that's uh, visuals and the audio. In terms of uh, doing the sound effects, eh? when you're doing uh, animation there's somebody who has to make all the sound effects and all the wind blowing and all the feet going you know ch -ch -ch like that that person that's called foley foley design and so that's uh, dave lavaki he's the one who um uh, sponsored the was one of the sponsors for the fiji pc who gave the video camera and uh, sound when i told him about this project he was definitely on board because he's that's something different for him to try this so because him too he's a musician uh he does audio production um so for him to try it at this this different aspect of uh, film production was very exciting for him. So that's for audio production. And for uh, the guy who model is modeling this uh, giant canoe in 3D, that's my friend, Michael, Michael John Light. Eh? Um, he is uh, born and bred in Fiji and his 3D skills, one of the best. Uh, he, he knows his 3D inside and out. So I, oh. I trust no one else but him to handle the 3D aspect, the 3D production of the film because this whole film will be done uh, drawing and 3D yeah? there's no actual live action. So it's, oh. it's all animated. And um, of course, our cultural consultant will be none other than Mr. Sevodrendre. Yeah, he, nice. is any, he was the guy right at the beginning when I came and asked him, how does this work? What, how, does this, how does that work? And so I, uh, he's very kindly um, uh, offered his time to be a cultural consultant so I can ask him questions about, you know, is this authentic? Does this work? Would this work? Um, yeah, so that's the team that I have now. 
Um, the, the production budget that I have for now is actually with these people that can get it uh, made. I'd like to bring on additional help, but yes. that's only if we hit our budget and hit our fundraising goal and go above. Um, there's definitely a storyboard and a background artist that I'd like to bring on board, but only after, only if we've hit our fundraising target. Yes. Um, yeah, but that's that's all the people that I have working on a project. Um, wow. All 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 guys I know and the the top notch, one hundred percent. Well done. That is amazing. So there you go. Uh, uh, Tumeli, one of my Tohu from Sydney, uh, Andy Vale Denford is uh, uh, saying sure. So there you go. There's a thumbs up and a smiley face. Laka, and uh, I will definitely be sharing the, the link yeah, on this platform. And uh, we'll definitely you know, try and share the love because uh, the people that you've identified here, these are, I think, the best you know, uh, in the field in Fiji and for you to identify them now and for them to be willing, you know, to join you on this journey in the earlier part of this project. Uh, we just can't wait to actually see the finished product. Oh, I should say that the we're actually doing a uh, Zoom session with the crew tomorrow afternoon oh. uh, at 3 p.m. Yeah, we'll be doing a, just to introduce everyone to uh, the people who are following this uh, Kickstarter just to okay. show all this gang that'll be working. And if you've got any questions, you can ask them and ask us. So oh. we'll be definitely, we'll be doing a crew, um, a crew Zoom session tomorrow, 3 p.m. Um, if you wanna check it out, uh, go to the Solimbula Facebook page. Where you can uh, be notified of when it starts. Oh, wow, look at that, it's a raver. So for those of you who are listening in uh, tomorrow, look at the timing to me. Uh, it's timing. perfect. Yeah. So tomorrow at 3 p.m. Fiji time, um, the Solimbula team will be having uh, their own Zoom uh, meeting uh, or Zoom se session for Q&A. So I think that'll be a really good opportunity for you to actually see these amazing individuals face to face. So these are the names, Tui Lendua, uh, who will be um, doing the, the, the drawing, yeah? um, the sketches and all of that. Uh, he's an amazing artist. I've seen some of his work. Inoke Kaloni Singer for music, um, Dave Lavaki for sound effect, Michael John Light for his 3D work. And the example, as you can see behind um, Tumeli right there, that's amazing. And uh, of course, uh, the one and only uh, Simeone Sebunrenre, um, who is our cultural knowledge holder um, mm. in G. So you are very, very um, blessed, I think, to have oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Master Simi. Uh, for the knowledge that he has, and he's always willing to share. And I think that's a, a very unique uh, uh, quality that he has to me. I, I have to say one thing is that when I was doing the Fiji BC production, mm. when I asked him, can we do a show about Fiji history in English? And he said, it's funny because nobody's ever asked. So I think in terms of like, if you want to get to know more about uh, Fiji history, yes. or if you want to do any production, um, yeah. now's the time uh, to approach uh, the Ministry of Itaoki Affairs. They are more than willing to help out wow. in any creative endeavor wow. that's uh, got the uh, Fiji culture and traditions uh, at heart. So uh, I encourage anyone to um, definitely tap this as a resource. Yes, absolutely. And that is a blessing yeah? for Fiji. We have the Itoke uh, Ministry, Ministry of Itoke Affairs. We have the Itoke Trust Fund. Uh, we have so many amazing um, government departments uh, that uh, you know, offer all these um, services for us. So it's just only us to take the step yeah? um, to either catch the Nasese bus uh, to go down to Nasova or walk down to the, to the Fiji Museum walk through the Thurston Gardens um, and just, you know, take the first step. I think that's always the case to me, yeah? When you're doing a project, um, sometimes you're nervous or sometimes you don't know what to do. Um, so sometimes it's just good to be vulnerable, right? Just to be vulnerable and just kind of go and just see how, how it goes. And look, look what you and uh, Michael did. You went to the museum, the museum was closed and guess who was there? Jerry. Yeah. So Jerry was able to take you around and what a wonderful person to be with as well, because he is very, very well informed that uh, young man. Oh yeah, he knows his stuff. Yeah, he was a really great yes. help. 
uh, there's a lot of questions we asked him and um, like the, the few that he did know, he was like, oh, I, I can't answer that. And I was like, ah, honest fella, okay, set. You know, it's really, yeah, I was really grateful for his um see there you go and uh, you know what you have done to Meli uh, is really really encouraging you know for um, our our listeners and even our young ones who are listening in so speaking of our young ones um, to Meli some of them may be listening uh, right now so I'm seeing Bulevinaka there's a few here saying Bula uh, from uh, Dubai Bulevinaka Safaira oh, wow. yes listening in from Dubai uh, Dr. Leila um, Tuvura Bulanako Revangu, so she's a medical doctor, uh, logging in from um, uh, Vesari, Bulevinaka, uh, and also Bula, we Bula. have uh, Nadine Dewa logging in from England. Yeah, so that's just a few yeah. I could uh, be able to connect. To. And John and Ronnie Masi, to me, this is another gentleman who remembered you when you were a little boy. <sighs> Yeah, all these people remember. Can someone remember me as I am now, please, in the comments? <laughs> so to mainly, um, John and Ronnie Mas has given like a genealogy on the page, so you can have a look at it when you we finish our talent. Bulevinaka John and Ronnie Masi, Vinaka Vinaka Vakalevo for sharing your beautiful story about Tumeli. So looks like he wasn't a naughty boy at all. Yeah. <laughs> So for those of the young ones listening in Tumel, what would be, um, you know, your advice to them career wise, or some of them are really passionate, you know, in the field of the arts, you know, some of them may be into some of the things you've been uh, like what Tuilendua does, you know, comics, um, music, sound effects, 3D, these are amazing stuff and video skills, like what you're doing in animation, what would be sir, maybe just a few advice you'd like to give to them? I'll start off by saying this, mm. the art scene in Fiji mm -hmm. has traditionally had a lot of trouble with support. And I'm not just talking about support in general, um, like going to watch the show, I'm actually talking about going back to the school curriculum. Right. Um, the arts has often been the last thing that uh, the school curriculum sort of uh, considers in terms of uh, the, the needs met. And um, for me, I, I know this personally, my mom is a, was a music teacher in uh, grammar. <laughs> and so you have the school, you have the, the school, and then right on the outside, right on the side, right next to the, the boundary is the little music, uh, music room and the art room. And yes. when I thought about it uh, later, it, it's sort of like representative of how the, 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 the school curriculum treats um, the arts. Um, a very big focus on so-called the white collar um, jobs and very little, uh, after, you know, almost like an afterthought uh, for the arts. And, you know, the, the evidence points to the opposite when you see all these people. Mm -hmm. We Fijians, we, we got talent, man. We are very artistic, mm -hmm. you know, musicians, we we're dancers. We, there's a big, strong, you know, creative vibe in um, uh, us Fijians and Pacific Islanders. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd, I'd like, I'd, going forward, I'd, I'd like to um, uh, champion the cause for a better uh, school curriculum development for the yeah. arts um, support, both from mm -hmm. school right up until, uh, uh, right up until, you know, uni um, mm -hmm. going forth. Um, as for actual direct um, advice to those people who are interested in the arts, if they mm. haven't started, now would be the time. Start yes. now. <laughs> I'm, mm. I'm, I'm actually kind of, in terms of uh, being a creative, uh, I, I'm, I'm kind of past my prime, so I'm starting now and I'm trying to make up for lost time. Uh. So if you start now as a creative to learn, you have all the resources in the world, literally you have. For me, I learned a lot of my skills from YouTube. Um, to learn how to uh, design, to animate. Mm -hmm. um, there's no animation school in uh, Fiji. There's no, there's only graphic design and they teach mm -hmm. graphic design. They don't so. actually teach stuff like this, like 3D modeling or animation, all that mm -hmm. stuff. If you want to be creative, YouTube's your friend, the internet's your friend, learn from there. You have no excuse not to learn any of the skills so. that uh, a lot of the overseas uh, students, they learn. Um, mm -hmm. So that provides a great uh, springboard for you to, um, get started being creative. So I really encourage any young people 
who are sort of on the on the fence about being creative or uh, uh, thinking of it as a career. The mm. tricky the tricky thing the tricky thing, mm. especially now with COVID times, is that if you want to make uh, the arts uh, a career, you mm. have to find a niche. That's the I think that's a the tricky thing um, about all of us is that business wise we're not quite you know. Uh, mm. very good with business so you have yes. to find a niche that actually supports you as a career and a mm. lot of these people uh, they're turning to the internet and they're turning to technology to help mm. with that you know they're doing concerts you see they're doing concerts on facebook uh, on twitter yes. space it's they the and they're doing that you know you we do the concert you do the fakawela to our empaisa yes. you know that's using technology to, yes. to fund for their career uh, that's definitely non-traditional Definitely yes. non-traditional, not the usual pay for the concert, pay for the music, yeah. but it works. And um, so I encourage um, all creatives to um, find your niche. Yeah. Mm, so, wow. You're not, you're not a it's, uh, um, yeah, very refreshing, you know, to Talano with you tonight, uh, uh, to Meli. And uh, I mean, I would love to invite you back again sometime uh, in, in a couple of months uh, for any updates on this project because it uh, looks like you've got a number of fans already online and they're asking for your link and uh, I'm sure a lot of our friends online will be definitely you know supporting you um, to mainly on your vision you know to get this project off the ground. I think on behalf of everybody we just want to congratulate you um, you know for the courage that you have to bring all these wonderful people, amazing lineup um, that you have to support your vision. And looks like you are very determined um, individual. So I don't know whether it's the Vano level side or the Tongan side. It's a good mix. It's a good mix. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a wonderful combination. Uh, maybe that's the way to say it. So uh, on behalf of all of us who are listening in tonight, and there will be many others who will be watching our replay, uh, we just want to say Vinakabaka level to you. Uh, to Meli uh, for doing what you love and uh, especially getting our stories on screens, whether it's animation or whether it's short films. And we know the future is bright for you. Um, and definitely many of us who are listening in uh, will definitely be there to support you. And we will be there tomorrow as well. Uh, 3 p.m. everyone, those of you listening in 3 p.m. PG time, uh, jump on the uh, uh, Solim, Solimbula, Solimbula page Just on Facebook. Solimbula. Yep. Yeah, Solimbula Facebook page, and there will be the Zoom link uh, when uh, you can be actually there um, to uh, join uh, her, uh, this, this Talano. So, Safaira, there's a few here who are asking for the link, so I'll definitely put up the link uh, on this uh, page. Um, uh, to Mele. Uh, yep, maybe yep. can you just say the link one more time for those of them who are listening in? So Ngulinguli, Denford, and Safira, they're asking for the link one more time uh, to Mele. Um, so you have to, man, there's an actual link, but uh, I don't know if I could put it in chat or I could post it underneath this video later. Okay. Um, but basically, you go to uh, www.kickstarter.com, Kickstarter, and then um, you search up uh, Solimbula. And you'll find it, or you can just go to the Solimbula Facebook page if you search up Solimbula on Facebook, and uh, you can find the link uh, in one of the posts there that'll take you to the Kickstarter. Right, there you go. Eh? So for those of you, I've kind of tried to put in the, the link, but maybe after Talano, if you want to respond to those of who are listening in who are wanting to help you, uh, that's a wonderful start. I'm really excited for you to mail it. Uh, yeah, with <laughs> Safaira uh, and uh, Ngulinguli Denford, uh, we just want to say Vinakabakalevu to all of you uh, for stopping by and listening to our Talano with uh, Tumeli. Um, before we finish, any last word or any other thing you want to say, Tumeli, um, to our listeners? Um, these are trying times, COVID, and we're going to be going uh, into uh, lockdown. So uh, um, I'm, I'm hoping that everyone stays safe, um, stay masked up if they go out and um, try and um, you know, stay in contact with your loved ones, especially when you go into lockdown, um, uh, isolation and uh, you know, mental health mm -hmm. is a real thing. So uh, try mm -hmm. and stay connected as much as you can and um, look after yourselves during these trying times and um, yes. we'll all see each other on the other side. Yes, uh, that's a wonderful uh, reminder. 
let's remain positive and uh, and uh, use these kind of platforms to share a lot of positive messages. Let's uplift one another and celebrate um, every milestone yeah, that we are, um, you know, achieving, you know, little by little. So Vinakabakalevu Atama Thompson uh, has put in some information there on the page. So Vinakabakalevu Atama for putting in the link uh, for Solimbula. Vinakabakalevu. So from all of us to Meli, uh, all the very best with your meeting tomorrow. And definitely, uh, I will invite you back again for another Talanoa in the next maybe, couple uh, of months. Maybe archaeology dig, then I can come along as well. Eh? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Okay. When there's a dig, I will definitely contact you and we can go and uh, yeah, do some excavations around Fiji. <laughs> You're going to love it. You're going to love it. I'm just worried you may leave your filmmaking and start digging. Uh, you know what? Why don't I make a film about uh, digging, <laughs> about archaeology? <laughs> so, all the very best. And I will see you in the Zoom tomorrow. Okay.